Welcome back to Cats, the channel by Spurs fans for Spurs fans. I'm your host, Stuart Woodrow, and we're here to unpack the gritty details of the Everton versus Tottenham Hotspur match that ended in a two-all draw. In a game where expectations were high, both teams batted it out on the pitch, but it's safe to say it wasn't the spectacle we'd hoped for. As one of our forum members opined, Everton were elated, Tottenham were deflated, leaving us with much to discuss about the performance and what it means moving forward. Before we get into the game's key moments and player performances, though, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Cats for more Tottenham Hotspur analysis and discussions in the future. Let's get started. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you all? Apart from having a streaming cold, I'm fine, thank you. You can't tell, Austin. You sound amazing, as always. Dignified and eloquent. Only because I haven't sworn yet, Stuart. Well, that's true. But we'll, we'll see how long that goes on for. <laughs> Ash, how are you doing? I'm good. It's a uh, Grammy day here in LA. And uh, it, it's been kind of like drizzle. Nothing like it is in South Wales. But <laughs> but, but raining here. And um, glad to be here. And um, yeah, what can I say? There's no sun out right now, which is odd. Oh, such a shame. I tell you, sometimes when people that live in sunnier climes, do they occasionally get the telephone out and go, yeah, I'm going to look up where I used to live in the UK and see, oh, it's 25 degrees colder. I'm, aren't I better off here? Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't need to, to do that. I remember what it was like living <laughs> in Cardiff when it rained every day in your face. I know exactly what it's like. Oh, it was, no, yeah, I remember, I've, I've spent a little bit of time in Cardiff. I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. Okay. I was in Richmond. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, yes, Yorkshire, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely parts of the world, but no, thank you very much. Right, let's say um, we've, we've avoided it as much as we can. Let's talk about the Everton game. Ah, uh, dear. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, how do I put this, enjoyable, really. It was probably one of the toughest games we've had this year, I think, in terms of being able to sit and watch it. A lot of the time this year, I've enjoyed the football so much. And been so excited by being able to sit down and watch Tottenham. And yet this one was almost like a Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte type performance at times. What did you guys think? Uh, can I go first? Of course you can. Thank you. Age before, age before beauty, obviously. Um, typical Sean Dyke's performance. They were very physical. I don't think the ref gave us anything in the first half, or not even in the second half, although they did get two bookings as I remember, and we got none. Mm. But I thought they allowed a lot of over-physical contact, um, particularly on the goalkeeper. And my main comment for the whole game is that when a man can stand on your goalkeeper and do nothing but push him with absolutely no intention whatsoever of going for the ball, then that is clearly a foul. And why that's not called up by the ref, I really don't know. But it strikes, strikes me that the refs have got zero cojones and are waiting for VAR to overturn return, to overturn uh, their calls, which they don't because they go with what the ref says. Um, I just think it's shocking. I think it's just an appalling way to play a game of football, to be quite honest. Yeah, I think you raise a really important point there. Um, VAR is there to either overturn an extremely bad decision by the referee or to clear up confusion when the referee's not been able to see it. If the referee's made a decision and hasn't referred it to VAR, then the VAR has to find a reason why he's wrong. And seeing as he was looking right at it, he could see what was going on, and yet he was the one that decided not to blow the whistle and call it a foul. VAR probably said, we can't interfere because it's not specifically an error, it's a judgment called by the referee. But for me, it was obstruction all day long. They had players that were not 100%. making any intent to touch the ball. Was it Harrison, Jack Harrison? Yep. He was, even the ball, the corner was kicked. He did not move towards the ball. He did not move into a position where he could get the ball. His entire intent was to get right into Vicario's way and push him and stop him from getting there. And that is a clear case, clear case of obstruction to me. But then again, I felt exactly the same thing against Manchester City. There were another three or four occasions against Everton, and the ref let it go every single time. 
And I think this is a really, really bad precedent for the Premier League and the PGMOL to be setting to say this is allowed because that is negative, negative football. And we're supposed, the Premier League is supposed to be encouraging teams to play football in an enjoyable manner. And that, it just creates so much controversy, so many people unhappy with the end result that it's, it's difficult to say, but that's a good result for me. Stuart, it's not football. It's not negative football because negative football is football. No. That is not football. <clears throat> All it is is physical thuggery. And well, I, I, I played rugby at school, and that was closer. That was more akin to what I did when I was playing rugby. So you know, absolutely. And on the other side, on the other hand, and I'll let Ashley come in in a minute. Um, if I were in that team, and if I were captain at that time, which was Romero yesterday, yeah. I would be putting my biggest central defender on the goalkeeper between him and the uh, the attacker. <laughs> Excuse me, between him and the attacker, mm -hmm. and I'd be leaning all over that attacker and just doing the protection and leaving the other defenders to deal with the the other incoming players because you've got to protect your keeper. But you've got a plan for that before the game kicks off. You can't you can't make that call in 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 the middle of a game because that is the kind of thing you work on in the run up to the game. You can't just make that call on the fly. That's the manager's choice. Well, I I I, I was watching the game and I was thinking that halfway through the game, mm. why don't we put our centre half on the keeper and protect him? I mean, I Ash, think... what did you feel about the game? Well, I, I am actually wanted. I'll only make a short comment because I actually wanted to talk about some bigger pictures of the game. Uh, <laughs> T teams are obviously seeing that the cario is susceptible, so we have to we have to train. We got a whole week off to train. We have to find a solution to this because other teams are just going to do the same thing. Uh, the refs, if the refs are not going to call it, then we have to take some action. I hope that Ange this week is doing something to uh, help us and and protect him. You know, um, I'm not sure set pieces is his area. I think it's uh, Mia Yednak that covers that area yeah, um, yeah. I'm, uh, I am certain that they will have looked at that and said okay we need to set up something yeah. to defend set pieces because there is no way having seen Man City get away with it having seen Everton get away with it there is no way that our next set of opponents are not going to look at that and say oh well what can we do now oh, we yeah. definitely won't put a man on the goalkeeper and obstruct him oh they're absolutely going to do it every single time from now on right exactly um I have some uh, bigger questions about the game, if I may. Just observation, mm -hmm. and then see what you guys think about it. Stu, you and I both um, agreed before the season, we thought that we would finish in fifth place. My first question is, is You is said that... fourth. No, 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 don't you go, oh, Jane. You no, said fourth. I said, fourth. Well, I said that. No, no, sorry. I said out, outside the, the, the uh, Champions League. So I said in Europe, okay. but outside the Champions League. Which could be fifth or sixth, actually. Um, so, um, I, I, what are, we could well be where we're supposed to be because we're in fifth right now. That's one. Um, yeah. a, a, another one is that ten game run seems so far behind us. I wanted to ask: Did that ten game run raise some false expectations? Because this is where we are in the rebuild. And the last one area is. And this is on Ange. Game management issues. Um, we should have seen out that game. Is he so gung ho that he, d excuse me, doesn't want Decky or whomever to go into the corner to do what Haaland would do? You know, um, is he so gung ho because we we could have done that and we didn't even bother. So three three areas. Are we in the position that we uh, we're supposed to be? It, did that 10-game 10, 10 run raise false expectations? And the third one is uh, game management issues. Because it's happened several times. What's that stat? Given up eight goals in the 90th minute or more. The most. In the um, yeah, also second highest opening goal scorers in the Premier League, I believe. is it 15 oh. times we've taken the lead. Good, good the at that end. goal in the game. Good yeah. at that end. Not so good at the, at the back end. Are we good at that? I know we're scoring a decent number of goals, but are we really that good at that end yet? I mean, well, I think a, our conversion rate probably is pretty high. Yeah. So, 
that would be my argument. Yeah, so the back end, that's what where I'm concerned, the yeah. game management issue. Um, in you... terms of game management, I think, and he said it before, he'd rather win a game 3-1 than 2-1. Um, and we had we only had one goal difference. I think he was looking for another goal to, to calm things down. And if sure. we got it, that would have been game over. It would sure. have been absolutely game over. Um, in terms of game management, my, the concern for me is the way we've been going to three at the back the last few games close in, to try and close the game out. It, to me, it seeds possession. It seeds the advantage. It gives up too much. And it's not been a surprise that it wasn't a surprise that we, we drew that game when they got that late, late, late goal, of which there is no there's no complaint for me. Everton, I felt, deserved the point in that game because I didn't think we were positive enough. I didn't think we pushed hard enough. And, I, you know, despite some lovely goals, I didn't think we made all that much to, to really say we deserve to win that game and, and make it ours. I did think that once um, Sar came on in the second half, we actually had quite a bit more positive play. I mean... Yeah. Pickford was forced into three or possibly four you know, half-decent saves. I mean, I would have expected to make them all, but they're, they're all goodish saves. Um, whereas I don't think um, Vic had anywhere near as much to do except to set pieces. And I thought in the second half, in in the middle third of the second half, I actually thought we played some very nice football. Um much better than we did in the first half of the game and much better than we did in the last yeah. 10 or 15 minutes of the game. If we go back to the start of the season, that first 10-game run, as Ash was discussing, um, I think maybe we kind of blew sides away with our positivity and the way we wanted to play. And it was just so strange to them to see a, a side playing in that manner that they, they, the side struggled to cope. But, you know... Premier League managers are smart and they're Premier League managers for a reason. They've got to the top of their profession. They've got to the top of, you know, where they're aiming for because they're able to look into these things and say, right, what can we do to disrupt this way of playing? And I felt Everton disrupted us well yesterday, just as I thought, you know, the the team prior to us disrupted us well. Um, so we're getting pulled into these little arguments and things that we don't need to. Um, so it's it's Brent yeah Brentford Brentford game was a was a tough watch as well, you know. But they disrupted us. Everton disrupted us, and we're going to see a lot more of it. We're going to see a lot more sides trying to niggle us and trying to get us out of our our flow. And we need to mature and we need to get past that. Sheffield United Wolves they did it earlier, you know. Well, we got Wolves not the next Coming game up. but the game after. They're going to be uh-huh. doing exactly the same thing. Um, Brighton and Hove at Brighton and Hove Albion next. They're coming off the back of a nice big win, so you know they're going to it with good form. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So are we where we should be? I think we are. It's going to be touch and go to get that uh, top four, probably between us and Aston Villa, unless one of those other teams like Man U sneak up on us, you know, or Brighton. I don't think Newcastle is. Um, and we're playing Aston Villa in uh, yeah. after the three is it three home games and we owe, we owe Villa because uh, Maddie Cash so we owe Villa. Um, I think that the, the the battle is I don't think we've I think we might be over and you know he was alluding to it. What do you mean? Are you saying that we're not going to win a cup? We're not going to win the league? Uh, yeah, you know I think that's sort of over with. You know, really realistically. I guess. Mean- I think last night's game, well, not last night, yesterday's game was the death knell for the title challenge. Uh-huh. You know, you've got to win games like that if you want to actually t- challenge Absolutely. for the title. I mean, it was it was always a long shot anyway. Um, you know, the, we've had a large changeover in players. We've had a changeover of manager. There's not many clubs that bring in a brand new manager and win the league in the first season. Absolutely. So. You know, it was it was a big ask anyway to do it in a stacked Premier League season where there's a lot of good quality clubs, you know, who are with established managers and established squads. It was a lot to ask. And I think fourth would be a really good result because I was saying fifth at the start of the season. Um, but I did also say I wanted us to go far in the FA Cup, if not win the damn thing. We've not managed to do that. So we've got one game a week for the rest of the season, basically. 
and it's mostly Saturday kickoffs, I believe, because I look forward to make sure it wasn't conflicting with anything. There is a Friday so, one. Yeah, is there one, one more the, Friday one? Yeah, one of the three home games, and the yeah. and the Chelsea ma- the match might be changed because of the the League Cup final. Chelsea match, I think, already has been the date's already been changed on it. So yeah, that could be fun. There, I mean, Chelsea. Would, you know, if we're talking about sides with problems, Chelsea are having a mare this season, which Absolutely. makes life a bit more interesting, a bit more fun for us. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. It's it's a bit of a shame for Poch, because I still I still appreciate Poch. I'm a fan. I like the guy. Uh, yeah, I don't too. like to say Agent Poch. Agent Poch. He's doing he's doing a good job there, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, they what lost four two against Wolves today? Yeah. Yeah. Wolves are not easy. I didn't actually see Arsenal won today. I didn't actually see what the results were. Did they win or was it a draw? Three one. Know... Oh, okay. Last I saw, it was a draw. That's, no, it's that's a big it's win. In the ninety something minute. What happened? Being Arsenal Liverpool. Won. That's a big win. Uh, Saka, Martinelli, and Trossard ninety plus two, and yeah, Liverpool down to ten in the eighty eighth minute. So they're going to be. All up in arms saying that the Premier League are against them and the referees hate them and stuff like that. So, <laughs> wouldn't be that you weren't good enough to do it. Never mind. But I mean, I, I still strongly believe that Man City are going to push on and, and end up winning this league again this year. I don't think I, there's any doubt whatsoever about that, Stu. Yeah. There's doubt. Of course, there's doubt. There, certainly, with Klopp leaving, there's a, an incentive for Liverpool players to say, we're going to make it, we're going to win it for Jurgen. No, 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 no. It's not. It's set up for them to be crying next season and say, hey, it's such a shame. Clock left and we deserve to win the league because we were going to win it. And, <laughs> so, it, it, no, it's set up for Liverpool to have that complaint. City are going to win the league, no doubt whatsoever. I think that we will have a good, coming back onto positive things, yeah. I think we're still without Son, we're still without Bissouma, although Bissouma seems to have malaria, for goodness sake, and he's playing. I don't know how. But Sarah's only just come back. We have had several weeks without key players. Yeah. And key players, Van der Ven yesterday, I've got to say, what a performance. That was Ledley King-esque in, in terms of the way he, he played. He, he was absolutely magnificent. Absolutely. Nero is back. And Madison was taken off after 70 minutes or whatever. He looks such a good player. He reminds me of Gascoigne at times. Who does? And Madison. Madison. I, I think we we are just coming back to getting our best players together. Mm-hmm. And I think I think we will go on a run now till the end of the season. Once we get everyone in the squad, um, I I think third or fourth is where we'll finish. Um, I don't think I have any doubt about it. Third would be extremely nice. Um, I don't think we're going to get to third. I think we. No, you are have... extremely nice. You're a very, very nice man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we've got <laughs> Man City, Liverpool. I think are your top two. Then it's yep. going to be between Arsenal, them, Arsenal be them, good. and Aston Villa for third, uh, or us potentially. We could still be in that mix. I think we'll be in the mix for Aston Villa and us for the uh, fourth and fifth place positions. I'm, I'm not hugely impressed by Arsenal this year, regardless of whether or not they've just beaten Liverpool. I am not hugely impressed by Arsenal this year. I, I don't see anything there that makes you go, oh, they're, they're a team that could steamroller everybody. They, they look beatable at times. Um, look, look they at play against us. We played them off the park in the second half. We really yeah. played very, very well against Arsenal in the, uh, in the away leg. And really? as, you, you as, just as up, was spoken earlier, you know, we've, we've missed large chunks of our team for what, since since the Chelsea game, which is in November. Yeah. You know, we're finally getting back to the point where we're going to have a full squad of people to choose from. Um, OK, Veliz has gone to Sevilla, I believe it is. Um, so yeah. we're a little bit short there. So maybe we've got Dame Scarlett, maybe the tiny bit short in terms of forward line backup, but. Hang on, we've got Richarlison, who scored nine goals in eight games. We've got Sonny, who has been excellent and has outperformed his XG by some massive level this year. Um, and you've got Timo Werner, who can play up front as well, even though his finishing can be a little bit wayward, as we saw yeah. yesterday. 
But there's, we've now got the opportunity to play our best 11 and play them on a regular basis because we've got one game a week for the rest of the season. Yeah. Keep people fit. Unless somebody comes in and smacks one of our players and breaks a bone or something, and please don't let that happen. Um, we've hopefully got over all of these hamstring issues with the warmer weather coming in soon. Um, you should find that players don't have that kind of issue. November was cold. December was cold. January's been cold. Things are starting to get a little bit better, I feel. And let's hope we don't have any more long-term injuries throughout the rest of the season. We we just get to put out our best 11 week after week after week. And just our biggest complaint will be who is our best 11 because there's options. Well, I've got some other complaints. Um, not so complaints. Listen, listen, I think Ange has done an amazing job, job with Richie. It's just mm. fantastic. He's got 10 goals now. He's uh, he's only is it four four goals behind Salah and uh, Haaland, two behind Sonny, who's got twelve. Yeah. Um, so he's done a good job. He's got him motivated, got him running, whatever. Okay, what? How does he get? Something's happened to Decky. He's just fallen off the edge. Bentoncourt, if he's still, if it's the injury issue, understandable. He is a shadow of his former self. He has been out for almost a year. Um, Decky, him, Johnson. I thought he was better coming on as a sub than starting, you know. Um, and how do we get those guys revved up somehow? I think we're going to need them, Stu. If, uh, yeah, get them back, but mm. we're going to need those players to be playing at a higher level. I think the return of Son is going to make such a huge difference. With, you know, by the middle of this month, he'll be back. So we've got, what, 10 more days till the final, I think, of the Asian Cup. Um, by Then he'll be back. So we've got, what, two more games to go at most without him. Um, but when he comes back, you've got to look at that front line. You're going to say it's going to be Son on the left. It's going to be Charleston up front. And then suddenly you have a choice. Is it Decky, Johnson, Werner? Who are those plays over on the right? Werner's right-footed. Um I think potentially he could be even better over on the right than he is on the left. So I wouldn't mind seeing that, seeing him beat players, you know, on the outside, getting that ball across, cutting it back as he reaches the as he reaches the line. Be very, very happy to see that. We're going to have so many options available to us. And our midfield is going to be almost back to what it was at the start of the season. Bissouma, if he's over the middle area. If not, you've got Bentancur if he can manage to get back in that groove that we've seen from it. And I'm confident he can get there. We've seen... In fairness to Benton Kerr, when he first came back, he actually had a couple of really good games. Yeah. Oh, just the one and game? That the was the one game that I've seen him where I, I thought he was really off it. <clears throat> he he wasn't great against Brentford. He wasn't great against Everton. He was a bit on the periphery. He had some moments in both games. Um, but I thought Hoiberg was better yesterday, even though Hoiberg didn't have his best game either. Um, but I think this side with Saar makes Saar just having Saar in the side makes such a huge difference. He's yeah. better on the ball. He's calmer in possession than Hoiberg. Um, he's got the legs to move about the pitch. He also covers Pedro Porro really nicely when Porro pushes up. So there's there's a lot to be looking forward to, and you know there's still more to come next season. Next season we keep saying it, but next season things are going to be even better. And you look at our midfield. We're going to have Divine back. We're going to have Bergval joining the club. Um, and ready to go, and he looks like a real talent. And they're talking about him being part of the first team squad from day one. So we can have real options in terms of rotation options and backup options as well. We could end up with a really strong side. Um, you, you, nobody's answered the questions. What what's happened to Decky? Decky did this last year, though. He had a period where he dipped. He, he started the season on fire. Then he had a period where he dipped, and he finished the season strong. It's this. Yeah. This is not unknown for him, and he's still what twenty three years old. He's so young. I think you know, he's twenty two. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, he could well be. Um, you know, he's I'm still so crazy. young. Young players have a lack of consistency at times. Yeah, I'm. Just, I'm not criticizing him. I like him a lot. I'm. I'm. My question was, how does Ange get some of these players to, uh, like he has with Richie, to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, exceed expectations. Match Give them or a break, you... put them in rotation, Let, show them that there's competition there and they've got to overcome. And if they're not up for it, if they're not up for the fight, one of the others will be. You know, yeah, so I think Becky... that's very much Ange's philosophy. He's not oh. going to give anyone a guaranteed spot. 
Decky didn't even start last game. He put Johnson back in, right? There you go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But Johnson, why did Johnson get the chance? Because he came in as a sub and took his opportunity and played well, very well. You want you wonder if that that's a thing that he for now that he, he, he because he's done that a couple of times, come on as a super sub and made a, a dramatic impression and goal scoring impression. So that could be some. Oh, it it might well be it'll fall to that once we get uh, Sunny back. It might well fall to Johnson yeah. become a super sub again. Well, it could be Johnson being the super sub. It could be Kulisewski, who let's not forget can also move into midfield. Um, we've got so many options available to us now, and it's it's nice to have. Let's hope they stay healthy. That's the thing. We've got to avoid injuries. We end up with another hit. We have another run of injuries like we had before. Then the season's going to end in a way that we're not particularly happy about. You know. Also, we have to take into consideration. And has been here six months. Yeah. Some of the team have been eight here months now, isn't it? Is it eight? Okay. Yeah. Else, then why don't you have anything? Um, um, we, we got two new players in in January. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot of players out. His ability to work with the core of the team has been severely restricted. Yeah. And so I think we're still learning what Andrew wants, let alone players getting back to form, getting back to fitness. And that is a problem because Romero, Madison, uh, Kulisewski, um, oh, I can't think of the other one I was thinking of. But, they're, they're, oh, they're Benton um, yeah. They're not back to full fitness. They're not back to integrating with the other players yet. We, have, we played on Wednesday night and then we played on Saturday lunchtime. Who had the minimum time of for preparation yesterday? So we've also played plenty of Fridays and Mondays. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the fixture list have, has actually smiled on us in terms of the time that um, Andrews had to work with the team, and in terms of the team being able to play and then recover from one game to play the next one. So. Good. Definitely, it's definitely something you've got to look at is fixtures. But then a lot of other sides will complain about the fixture list as well. I know Liverpool are very, very unhappy with the fixture list um, and the number of times they've had to play on Monday nights or Friday nights. They've, you know, not been enjoyable for them. Not as many as us. Not as many as us. But we've not had European games to contend with as well. So, you know, and our cup commitments have been sadly quite light this year. So, I mean, we're going we're gonna to have more of a struggle next year because we're going to be playing European football of some kind next year. Hopefully, we'll go further in, in the Cups um, and it's going to be more of a struggle. But then we'll have a deeper squad as well because yeah. there's no way the work is finished when it comes to this what you, time. What do you guys feel about... I didn't think he would be this, this good. Well, he's in a, in a good run. What do you guys feel about Richie and what he's been... Because it's, it's an overall game. And he just seems to love the team and he loves the fans and the fans love him. Um, I just, I think he's just a terrific guy. And he's a Brazilian. Remember you were saying, Stu, last week, he doesn't score Brazilian like goals. Although those goals he scored yesterday were pretty nice. <laughs> it, it wasn't so much about the goals he scored. It was about his, the way he held up the ball and the way he moved. It was very, you know, English number nine, straight lines and things like that. But then suddenly against Brentford, we were seeing this sort of little chop backs and things like that. I was like, yeah, I like this. I like this side of, of him. And it was the first time we'd really seen that from him this season. Um, and certainly last season, last season, he was a shadow of the player we're seeing now. It's, I, I think it's great to see him. And he's looking like a £60 million pound striker at the moment. Do you know, yes. it's funny. I hated Richarlison. I, really? I liked him. I remember first seeing him for Watford, and I thought, gosh, he's talented. But I thought, what a piece of shit <laughs> um, he is. Um, so notice, I, notice I saved you the bleep there, Steve. Yeah, I heard. Um, and then at Everton, I, at the end of last season, he was the man that sort of kept them afloat. And when he signed for us, I thought, oh, God. And I just don't naturally resonate with the man. But yesterday's performance, and his respect for the fans when he sort of did his praying and bowing to the Everton fans when he scored his goals. Yeah. I thought, what a good bloke. <laughs> I, yeah, I that was really impressive. I still really warm to him because of his tattoos, because I don't like tattoos. 
But that, that is a purely personal thing. But it's purely being someone of my age who doesn't like tattoos particularly, um, which probably means I hate every player in the in the league. But I thought That's yesterday. Ben da- I think Ben Davis is uninked. So. Uh, well, oh, maybe. Well, I'm actually <laughs> really like Ben Davis, as it happens. There you uh, go. But I, I thought yesterday Richarlison was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That's Both why as a human up. being and as a player. Absolutely. That's, I'm impressed. I would be, when he was at Everton, when he was at Watford, I hated playing against him. In the same way that, like, Neil Mope now is that guy. Neil Mope is that guy you don't want your guy because he's niggly, he's a pain, he's, he gets in your face and he's, an, he's a bit of an ass. I don't think I need to bleep that. Um, so, and Neil Mope is not worth, worth £60 million and he's never going to score as many goals as Richarlison has. But he was that kind of player. He kind of wound you up the wrong way. And he did that last season. He wound up Nottingham Forest. He ended up getting kicked off the ball. He's, you know, he's had little moments, but now he's doing it for us. And as you said, I thought the respect he showed to Everton fans yesterday was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, it shows that he really appreciates having that link with the supporters and we're a club that likes to have that kind of feeling with our players so it works out very nicely for us yeah uh, hey, could, could we do what people are doing vicario could we do it to their goalkeeper yeah we'll get yellow cards and we'll get them against us yeah of course we will as soon as we start doing it to other clubs it will it will turn around and go oh no you can't do that you're obstructing people Oh. Also, I don't want to do it. I I want us to be whiter than white. We're not because we've got uh, we've got um, Ramiro playing for us. Mm. It's a legitimate but, tactic, though. It is a legitimate tactic. It's yeah. not what I want to see, but it is a legitimate thing to do at, at for set pieces. Yes, they, they, I brought this up before. They do this in uh, professional hockey. They mm. they station a guy in front of the goalkeeper. As long as he's outside of the circular, it's a semicircle crease, the goalie's semicircle crease, uh, but he's essentially blocking the view of the uh, goaltender, and he's allowed yeah. to do that if he enters the crease, which happens because it's kind of iffy. If he enters the crease, then he can be called for goalie interference, and he gets uh, penalized for that, and the goals get disallowed. But they're aware it's a similar type thing, you know? Um, interfering with the goalkeeper, but it's somewhat legitimized in uh, in the NFL. Actually, in, in the NHL, in the NFL, is a similar thing where they have players block off, you know, run interference. You're running mm-hmm. your path, and you block off the defender on another on one of your teammates, and they seem to get away with that sort of interference, you know. Anyway. But if you look at rugby union, if someone blocks someone that's running. That's an immediate penalty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and it's it's in, the same in, in you can run interference, but you can't hold. Holding is a foul, um, but you can't. You can run interference, so you can block them off. But as long as you don't actually put your arms around, you can hold them off with your hands. You can't actually like grab hold of them. Well, that goes it's a on. Skill. It's that, a skill. That goes on in uh, all the time. Yeah. All the time, and it's got worse. It's got worse. Because you see it, they're wrestling, with, and we do it too. But, you know, grabbing, holding, pulling shirts away from the referee. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it'll continue until somebody is dramatically penalized by that, or a bunch of them are dramatically penalized for that sort of uh, strategy. I must say, I, I played in goal. We're going back 100 years when people had shorts and down to the knees and all the rest of it. It was last century, right, Us? It, well, it, it was the last century as it okay. happens. I just did it. <laughs> shirts shirts um, down to the knees. So hang on, that's uh, Romero now. So <laughs> well, exactly, yeah. But, yeah. but I'm I'm talking back back to the sort of late sixties, early seventies. Now I played local league football, and for some of the time I played in goal. And when I was a goalkeeper, I'd go for the ball. I'm I'm not tall. I'm five foot eight, but I I'd, I'd shout keeper and. Yeah. No one would get in my way because I was going for that ball and I was committed to it. And that mentality seems to have disappeared to some extent because keepers get protection. Yeah, you rarely get a keeper booked. You rarely get a keeper sent off. Yet I've seen keepers in the last few weeks laying people out with punches where they 
make no attempt to get the ball and they've actually hit people. Mm -hmm. And um, they seem to get ultimate protection. But if I were a keeper now, I think I would be doing what I used to do then and making sure that my physical presence was superior to everyone else's physical presence because there's a psychology in keeping. There's a psychology in football. If, if you make yourself the person that is in command, then people will be in deference to you. It doesn't matter what position they play or what they do. If you are totally positive and committed, then you will get people psychologically backing down because that's what people do in life, in all yeah. walks of life, let alone physical. There is There is a bit of a flip side to that. I mean, you were a goalie. I played either centre-forward, centre-back or towards the end of my time playing football, right back. But my job, if I wasn't taking the corners, my job was to stand in front of the goalkeeper, not to push him, but to no. stand in front of the goalkeeper and to basically just be where he wanted to run. So I wasn't stepping in for running, but he had to get around me. Now I'm 6'5", bit of a unit, and uh, I made it difficult for the goalkeepers to do that. And because they couldn't, they could shout keepers as much as they like, but they had to get a head of steam up to get get running out of the box. So that was kind of my job. So, mm. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but there's no, there is a flip side to it. Oh, didn't Vicario oh. do a better job of that in the second half? What well, um, going back to what Oz just said, he was either calling. I can't. I don't know if I heard calling for the ball. He was grabbing a lot more balls. He was just exactly what you said, Oz. Uh, he took control. It seemed to take control of his area area on those corner kicks, except for the, except for that um, uh, free kick at the end. Um, mm. it seemed to change. I don't know what that happened. That wasn't down to him, though. What was it then? Nah, that was that wasn't down to him. It's like there's no way a goalkeeper would be coming that far to get a ball like that. Yeah, no, no, so. he, no, no, no. He was grabbing the ball as opposed to trying to flap or punch or whatever. He was. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm just talking about the free kick at the end. That wasn't down to him. Oh, um, no, no, they, they, at some point, they stopped actually putting a man on him. Yeah, that's um, at corners. And he yeah. started to get free reign, and that's what there was also a point where I think Van der Ven blocked off one of the guy who was supposed to be doing it, and I think that was when they stopped because they said, "Well, you know, they've they've got wise to this one now. Let's try a different tactic." As soon as he had free reign, he was coming out, he was claiming the ball very nicely. Was. And let's not let's not get things mixed up here. He has been responsible for a decent number of points this season. He's been oh excellent. god, yes, right. absolutely. I can't I can't think of three goalkeepers in the league I'd change him for. Um, so Allison is a potential. Edison potential. Beyond that, is there anyone else in the league you change him for? Would you change him for Anana? No. <laughs> Anana was the number one goalkeeper in Italy last year with uh, Vicario number two. So oh, he was okay. Yeah. Anana was also the goalkeeper when we beat Ajax three two in the uh, semi final. He was in indeed. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> and and funny enough. Funny enough, the Manchester United manager was also manager. Ten Hag there you was, go. Ten Hag was the manager well. that night. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So there you go. Yeah. Well, um, in terms of the, the watchability, uh, marks out of 10 for this one, I would say this was probably a three for just, just being able to sit there and enjoy watching the match. I would give that a score of three. What would you give it? Um, Austin's thinking, so we're going to go to Ash. <laughs> Well, feel. Come on. Considering I had to get up at four thirty, you know. Yeah, right. So that takes it down a couple of notches. <laughs> Can we give a negative? No, <laughs> I don't get depressed now if they if they lose or if they you know it doesn't go our way. It's just sort of just forget about it. You know, I went swimming instead when I went. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. I give it a five out of ten. It wasn't a good game. And by the way, I. I never liked Sean Dyche going back to Burnley. It's just horrible. I remember we, we would go and play Burnley at, at their ground, and it was like they were the away team at their ground. Yeah. You know, He's and effective, then, though. He's effective away, though. He's very good at setting up free I'll, kicks and oh, set yeah. pieces doesn't and stuff like, like that. Doesn't mean you have to like ugly football. Oh, no. uh, I don't like ugly football. It's a, that's just my own take. I don't like ugly But again, football. it's cutting your cutting your cloth to see, isn't it? Austin. Marks out of 10 for just the watchability right. factor. There, there are two marks out of 10. The first is an emotional mark, which is four. Yeah. Right. Four? Because, 
Even when Spurs are playing fantastically, I'm stressed because that's just a historical that's thing. Tottenham. 60 years of sporting Spurs and I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. In terms of quality of football, I thought in the second half when Saar came on, we actually played some really nice football. And I would have given them six and a half out of ten for that period of time. Less for the, the overall game. But yeah. I actually, at that point in time, I was enjoying watching them. And I was thinking, we're going to win this. We're going to score another goal. And um, I was a bit frustrated. That we did. Well, no, I was very frustrated that we didn't. And I still haven't sworn, by the way. Very good. Very good. Um, okay. Final point. Um, man of the match. I'm really conflicted. I'll be honest. I know which two you, you look at this. You look at the game, and you like two goals scored, two very good goals scored, and Richarlison should be mad at a match, right? No. Nope. Why am I saying Van der Ven? I say Van, well, Van, Van der Ven, one hundred percent. I thought Van der Ven's performance was the best defensive performance I've seen from a Spurs player since the days of Ledley King. Since the King, yeah. Ash, am I crazy? No, not at all. I I would give two. If you say the attacking man of the match, Richie, of course, defensive man of the match, uh, Van der Ven. Um, it it you is been in America of... too long. You you get you've been in America so long now that you want to try and give extra points for for participation. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to add something. I thought Madison was totally fantastic as well. Well, let me finish he, my thought on he, Van der Ven. I think he, okay. he dipped. Can I finish my thought on Van der Ven? Go on, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is a pretty risky. He's superb, absolutely superb. And I, even the commentators go, "Holy jeez, where, where did?" And they, and they show he was there, and then he's there. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty risky, though, if you think about it. It is a high risk sort of game because uh, um, Romero's not back there, and guess who is Van der Ven? You know, so right. lovely to see. And, and I, okay, if we push comes to shove, okay, he gets man of the match, but it is risky. Um, <laughs> a more he was so good. Van der Ven was so good. I mean, there was some King against Robin esque tackles in there. That's the yeah. And it's ju it just kind of makes you go. Oh, when he came uh, over to Romero's side and played the ball, yeah, he did. We're absolutely first rate. I mean, he really was very, very good indeed. And I think we've seen an improvement in Romero since, not since his injury, but since he got paired up with uh, Van der Ven again. We've seen maybe it's the captaincy, maybe it's having the armband on that just calms him down and makes him feel a bit more mature. Um, he's he's improved so much, and he was maybe he was it's good the fact before. That he feels he doesn't have to do absolutely everything like he felt he had to do yeah. before. Whereas Van der Ven is now doing <clears throat> more than an equal share. Yep, no, it's very very possible. Okay, okay. so that's 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 Everton out of the way with. Um, Austin, you went. You didn't manage to make it to, to us for the uh, the transfer chat. How did you feel the transfer window went? I was very pleased with it. Very pleased mm. with the uh, dr draggers in and uh, and Werner, but I was absolutely chuffed to bits with the Swedish kid at right at the end. Bergman, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I want Spurs to be bringing their own players through, and he will qualify as homegrown because. By the mm -hmm. time he's been here three years, he'll only be 21. So I like that. I love the fact that we've got other youngsters that I think are absolutely superb. Uh, I haven't mentioned um, Jamie Donnelly, who, when he came in against Brentford, got booked. But I was chuffed to bits with the way he got booked because he said, you're not getting past me. And he's a youngster. And he yeah. showed an adult-type maturity in terms of what he did. Now, I'm not in favour of foul play at all. I, I, I like football to be played. But I've been watching Donnelly now for about two and a half, three years. He's got the most beautiful left foot on him. It is, his passing and his eye is fantastic. Sorry, I've gone off transfer business. I've gone on to a catch. all right. No, we can talk um, about the youngsters as well because we've got a nice little crop coming through. Yeah, we have. And Mikey Moore was, trans was playing with the first team in training this week. Yeah. And he he looks a fabulous little player, and so I'm actually really really excited. But get, getting the Swede in when we're up against Barcelona for Christ's sake, not not any other club but Barcelona. We got um, we got Dragazan when when um, Bayern Munich wanted him. 
Mm. We are now attracting people because we are an attractive club to come to. And I am so excited about that because I think we've now got a nucleus of players that will come through. They won't all come through because that, that yeah, life is like that. But I think we've got two, three, maybe four players that will come through and play first team football in the next two to three years. So win transfer window, drag us in. I think looks a terrific player. Uh, he's incredibly strong. I like him. Uh, Werner, I'm sure will score goals once he gets his confidence and once he starts to get the the feed from the midfield, which he hasn't got yet. Um, and then we signed the, the young Swede, and I'm very pleased with it. Yeah. Um, if we're going to talk youngsters, we do have a very healthy crop of good quality youngsters coming through, um, some of which we have purchased in, like Phillips. Um, I guess, for me, Phillips and Dorrington are probably the least likely to make it because we've spent big money in that area already. Uh, so they've got, they're going to have a tough time breaking through. Jamie Donnelly looks like a real prospect. Uh, Bergval, not seen a huge amount of him, but what I have seen looks very, very good. And yeah. his interview has a, a huge amount of maturity for a guy who's only just turned 18 in there. Yeah. So, and it, apparently I was reading up about the, um, the academy he came through, like low on coach numbers, co number of coaches and, you know, players like that, but they work to to bring players through and give them a technical base and you know the confidence to to do what they need to. There was I think there was a really good article on the BBC. Check it out if you if you want to. Um, but Bogra looks like a real find. Um, but for me, still the player I'm really looking forward to seeing in our colours is Alfie Devine. Alfie Devine's a really nice little player and doing well at Plymouth. And of course, Mikey Moore, who's still only 16 years old, scored a hat trick for the under 18s against Southampton. That kid's going to be some player. And we were, I mean, you and I were talking about um, the Noosa deal. And I said, I do not want any player to get a guaranteed playing time in their contract. I'm fairly sure I heard that uh, Mikey Moore has a number of minutes in his contract, as he, you know, steps up as he gets older. I'm not against it because he looks like a magic little player. He magic does. Mikey Moore. There you go. He's a gazer. He I is. He is. Um, and on the other side, I think, you know, the more defensive side, the the, the harder working side of things, um, a lot of people uh, are missing out on a player called Tyrese Hall. Tyrese Hall is going to be a really good player. He's very much in the Basuma mold, but he's got some goal scoring ability with it as well. He doesn't panic when right in front of goal. Like no, Basuma good player. Does. Seen them. Yeah. So I don't rate Dorrington, but I do I do rate um, the other lad that Phillips. <laughs> Phillips. Yeah, you've been feeling you've been following him since he was at Blackburn Day, so yeah. Yes. Um Oh the other player I really rate is the centre forward we've got in the under twenty ones who's scoring goal after goal after goal after we got from one of the Sheffield yeah. clubs about two or three years ago. Uh Langshire came from Sheffield United for two million. Yeah. Will Lang Will Langshire, yeah. He looks like a very, very natural finisher. And incidentally, um, Belize had a good uh, write-up today for his performance at uh, Sevilla. I haven't followed that. I, I was hoping to try and watch the match, but I didn't manage to. So, anyway. No, I didn't see it. I just saw the report. But okay. Good, good write-up. I'll look that up. I'll look that up. Okay, so um, end of the show, I guess. Uh, if you've got this far and you haven't subscribed yet, please... Get over there and make sure you do. Um, Ash, have you got anything you want to be uh, calling out? Any magazine articles coming out you want us to take a look at? Um, I'll, I'll have to post them. I just did uh, interviews with uh, Sofia Vergara. She's mm -hmm. playing a criminal, a criminal godmother, called, and it's called uh, Griselda. 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 Yeah, Griselda, that's right, yeah. I, and you know about this. I, I, I did an interview with uh, a group interview with uh, Dakota Johnson. She's in a mm -hmm. Marvel uh, project coming out very shortly called Madam Web. Um, I, I did do an interview, and the story is out. I'll, I'll post it on the Cats page on uh, Clive Owen, Liverpool fan, who uh, he's in a series that's out now, at least over here, called Monsieur Spade. Which is uh, they they take a fictional character, the one that Bogey made famous, uh, Sam Spade. Mm -hmm. to Sam Spade, 
and it's like he's retired to the south of France, and then some nun or something like that gets murdered, and he gets called back. So it's just speculative fiction on science, on fiction anyway type thing. But, but Clive Owen is such a wonderful, wonderful human being. That and sounds like fun. Yeah, and a great yeah. actor. It's just a mini series, six episodes, you know. So uh, and then this book deal, it's it's actually to do with copyright and stuff, and it's just. You know, it's such a pain, these things, you know, copyright. Who has the right to copy it? Who has access to the book, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I was the copyright owner, I'm sorry, with Sonny Grasso. Sonny Grasso passed away. Who? Uh, so I've got half of it. Who has the other half? His estate, which, which involves 22 people. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's a that's a story for another day, but we'll we'll get on to it. Austin, you got anything going on in life you want to tell us about? No, not really. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I can't name drop like Ashley can, but when I was um, when I was in London, I was doing um, upmarket mini cabbing. I drove people like Glenn Close and Benedict Cumberbatch and Beverly Knight and Sheridan Smith. If they, yeah, if if that counts for anything, but no, I've got nothing nothing to report. <laughs> 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 all right well thank you everybody for joining us and um we'll see you what after the next game which i, I did wolves wolves yes um we'll be back then and uh let's hope let's hope for a slightly more enjoyable match just a bit more then and so until then everybody one more time come on you spurs Stuart, thanks for hosting as always my pleasure take care i hope you feel better soon i uh, will i'm sure i will see you guys <laughs>